In antiquity, Paeonia Pionie, was the landing kingdom of the Paeonians. The exact original boundaries of Paeonia, like the early history of its inhabitants, are obscure, but it is believed that Paeonia roughly corresponds to the present-day Republic of Macedonia, as well as a narrow strip of Greek Macedonia, and a small part of southwestern Bulgaria. In the time of classical Greece, Paeonia might have later included the whole Varda River Valley and the surrounding areas. Paeonia was located immediately north of ancient Macedonia, and to the southeast of Dardania in the east were the Thracian mountains, and in the west, the Illyrians. It was separated from Dardania by the mountains through which the Varda River passes from the field of Scuppi to the valley of Bylazora. Tribes. The Paeonian tribes were Agranus, Almopians, Leians, Derones, Adomantus, Piaple. Dobas, Syropyanes, Origin. Some modern scholars consider the Paeonians to have been of either Thracian or of mixed thraco illyrian origins. Some of the names of the Paeonians are also definitely Hellenic, although relatively little is known about them. Linguistically, the very small number of surviving words in the Paeonian language have been variously connected to its neighboring languages, Illyrian and Thracian. Several Eastern Paeonian tribes, including the Agranis, clearly fell within the Thracian sphere of influence. Yet, according to the national legend, they were Teucrian colonists from Troy. Homer speaks of Paeonians from the Axios fighting on the side of the Trojans, but the Iliad does not mention whether the Paeonians were kin to the Trojans. Homer calls the Paeonian leader Pyrechmus, but, later on in the Iliad, Homer mentions a second leader, Astropius, son of Pelagon. Before the reign of Darius Hystaspes, they had made their way as far east as Perinthus in Thrace on the Propontis. At one time all Mygdonia, together with Crestonia, was subject to them. When Xerxes crossed Chalcidice on his way to Therma, he is said to have marched through Paeonian territory. They occupied the entire valley of the Axios as far inland as Stobi. The valleys to the east of it as far as the Strymon and the country round Astebus and the river of the same name, with the water of which they anointed their kings, Emathia, roughly the district between the Halicomon and Axios, was once called Paeonia, and Peria and Pelagonia were inhabited by Paeonians. As a consequence of the growth of Macedonian power, and under pressure from their Thracian neighbours, the territory was considerably diminished and in historical times was limited to the north of Macedonia from Illyria to the Strymon. In Greek mythology, the Paeonians were said to have derived their name from Paeo and the son of Endymion, Paeonian kingdom. In early times, the chief town and seat of the Paeonian kings was Bylazora on the Varda. Later, the seat of the kings was moved to Stobi. Subjugation of the Paeonians happened as a part of Persian military operations initiated by Darius the Great in 513 after immense preparations. A huge Achaemenid army invaded the Balkans and tried to defeat the European Scythians roaming to the north of the Danube River. Darius' her army subjugated several Thracian peoples, and virtually all other regions that touched the European part of the Black Sea such as parts of nowadays Bulgaria, Romania, Ukraine, and Russia, before it returned to Asia Minor. Darius left in Europe one of his commanders named Megabazes whose task was to accomplish conquests in the Balkans. The Persian troops subjugated gold-rich Thrace, the coastal Greek cities, as well as defeating and conquering the powerful Paeonians. At some point after the Greco-Persian Wars, the Paeonian princedoms coalesced into a kingdom centered in the central and upper reaches of the Axios and Strymon rivers, corresponding with today's northern Macedonia and western Bulgaria. They joined with the Illyrians to attack the northern areas of the kingdom of Macedonia. The Illyrians, who had a culture of piracy, would have been cut off from some trade routes if movement through this land had been blocked. 
they unsuccessfully attacked the northern defences of Macedonian territory in an attempt to occupy the region. In 360-359 BC, southern Paeonian tribes were launching raids into Macedon in support of an Illyrian invasion. The Macedonian royal house was thrown into a state of uncertainty by the death of Perdiccas III, but his brother Philip II assumed the throne, reformed the army, and proceeded to stop both the Illyrian invasion and the Paeonian raids through the boundary of the Macedonian frontier, which was the northern perimeter which he intended to defend as an area of his domain. He followed Perdiccas's success in 358 BC with a campaign deep into the north, into Paeonia itself. This reduced the Paeonian kingdom to a semi-autonomous, subordinate status, which led to a process of gradual and formal Hellenization of the Paeonians, who, during the reign of Philip II, began to issue coins with Greek legends like the Macedonian ones. A Paeonian contingent was attached to Alexander the Great's army. At the time of the Persian invasion, the Paeonians on the Lower Strymon had lost, while those in the north maintained their territorial determination. The daughter of Ordoleon, one of these kings, was the wife of Pyrrhus, king of Epirus and Alexander the Great wished to bestow the hand of his sister Sinani upon Langarus, who had shown himself loyal to Philip II. Olympias, Alexander the Great's mother, was a princess of the Molossians, an Epirot tribe. A genial dynasty also continued through the reigns of Paeonian kings. Kings Agis, 359 BC, Lycius, 356, 340 BC. Patraus 340-315 BC, Ordoleon son of Patraus 315-285 BC, Ariston 286-285 BC son of Ordoleon, Leon 278-250 BC, Dropian son of Leon 250-230 BC, Bastrius, BC, Mainline AGIs founded the Paeonian kingdom, pretended to the Macedonian throne in a time of instability. Lycius joined anti-Macedonian coalition with Grabos and Thrace in 356 BC. Patraeus served as a general to Alexander the Great in 331 BC. Ordoleon reduced to great straits by the Autariate, but was succored by Cassander. Ariston of Paeonia, loyal vassal of Macedonia in 286 BC, commanded a single squadron of Paeonians. Leon of Paeonia, consolidated and restored lost lands after the Gallic invasions in 280-279 BC. Dropian, last known Paeonian king in 230 BC, of a dwindling kingdom. Others pigress. One of the two tyrant brothers which in 511 BC persuaded Darius I to deport the coastal Paeonians to Asia, Mantis. One of the two tyrant brothers which in 511 BC persuaded Darius I to deport the coastal Paeonians to Asia, Dokidan, of the Derones, reigned during the 6th century BC. Dokim, of the Derones, reigned during the 6th century BC. Eurigetes of the Derones, reigned c. 480-465 BC, known only from his coinage. Chutaus, Rigan from c. 450-435 BC, known only from his coinage. Bastrius, reigned from c. 400-387 BC, known only from his coinage. Chutamador, reigned from 378 to 359 BC, known only from his coinage. Simnon, great ally of Philip II from 348 to 336 BC. Nichachos, reigned from 335 to 323 BC, son of Simin. Langris, of the Agrinus invaded the territory of the Autariate in 335 BC in coalition with Alexander the Great. Diplaos, of the Agrinus Rigand around 330 BC. Didus, allied Philip V of Macedon with 4,000 warriors from 215 to 197 BC. Foreign rulers Persian Darius I. 
subjugated Pionia in 511 halves BC. Xerxes included Peonians in vast Persian army of 481 BC for the invasion of Greece. Thracian Sitalces included Agrinus and Leans in his Macedonian campaign in 429 BC. Culture. The Peonians included several independent tribes, all later united under the rule of a single king. Little is known of their manners and customs. They adopted the cult of Dionysus, known amongst them as Dialus or Dryalus. And Herodotus mentions that the Thracian and Peonian women offered sacrifice to Queen Artemis. They worshipped the sun in the form of a small round disc fixed on the top of a pole. A passage in Athenaeus seems to indicate the affinity of their language with Mysian. They drank barley beer and various decoctions made from plants and herbs. The country was rich in gold and a bituminous kind of wood called tanrithic. The scanty remains of the Peonian language do not allow a firm judgment to be made. On one side are Wilhelm Tomacek and Paul Kretschmer, who claim it belonged to the Illyrian family, and on the other side is Demeter Decev, who claims affinities with Thracian. On the other hand, the Peonian kings issued coins from the time of Philip II of Macedon onwards, bearing their names written in straightforward Greek. All the names of the Peonian kings that have come down to us are, in fact, explainable within clearly related to Greek, a fact that, according to Erwin L. Merker, puts into question the theories of Illyrian and Thracian connections. The women were famous for their industry. In this connection Herodotus tells the story that Darius, having seen at Sardis a beautiful Peonian woman carrying a pitcher on her head, leading a horse to drink, and spinning flax, all at the same time, inquired who she was, having been informed that she was a Peonian, he sent instructions to Megabazus, commander in Thrace to deport two tribes of the nation without delay to Asia. An inscription, discovered in 1877 at Olympia on the base of a statue, states that it was set up by the community of the Peonians in honor of their king and founded Ropian. Another king, whose name appears as Lipius on a fragment of an inscription found at Athens relating to a treaty of alliance is no doubt identical with the Lycius or Lycius of Peonian coins. Decline. In 280 BC, the Gallic invaders under Brennus ravaged the land of the Peonians, who, being further hard-pressed by the Dardani, had no alternative but to join the Macedonians. Despite their combined efforts, however, the Peonians and Macedonians were defeated. Peonia consolidated again but, in 217 BC, the Macedonian king Philip V of Macedon, the son of Demetrius II, succeeded in uniting and incorporating into his empire the separate regions of Dacerisha and Peonia. A mere 70 years later, Roman legions conquered Macedon in turn, and a new and much larger Roman province bearing this name was formed. Peonia around the Axios formed the second and third districts respectively of the newly constituted Roman province of Macedonia. Centuries later under Diocletian, Peonia and Pelagonia formed a province called Macedonia Secundra or Macedonia Salutaris, belonging to the Praetorian prefecture of Illyricum.